Hey everybody, it's time once again for the Mythwits. That's right, season six starts right now. This is the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse, and sometimes scientists. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. It is January 14th, 2019. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this episode is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Hello, everybody. On this episode, we're talking with Mark Chrislip. Hi, guys. Hey, Mark. Uh, Mark is a practicing infectious disease physician in the great Pacific Northwest. He blogs and podcasts on infectious diseases and is a former blogger for science-based medicine. And as I was talking to Mark pri just prior to the show, I've been a fan of QuackCast for some time. I'm very interested in, in biological things and these nasty little bugs and such. Uh, and I've been wanting to get Mark on here for some time, and I just never, like, made that happen. And I was actually, I was pleasantly surprised. I sent Mark a, a, a guest request, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'd love to come on. I was like, what? All right. So, so we're glad to have you, Mark. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I obviously don't have a life. Right? Well, if, if you're welcome. here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, along with the rest of us, look at what, look yeah. what we're doing on a Monday night. As yeah. long as you're over by the Blazer game, I'm, I'm good to go. All right. Fantastic. So, so Mark, uh, he, he's, a, he's an infectious disease doctor, and he, and he blogs and writes about it, and he's very snarky. I, I love the snarky posts that you make uh, and, and with a sense of humor, which is very hard to add to a, um, something like you know, infectious diseases and microbiology and such. It's a very, uh, very strict science, uh, but you do it very well. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. I, a lot, making people laugh makes people remember. So it's yeah. a good way to teach people. Yeah. Uh, make them suffer or make them laugh. I prefer <laughs> laughter. We yes. do both oh, yeah. <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> we, we make ourselves laugh by telling bad jokes at and other people's expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so you know, there's, there's, uh, we, we've had a number of scientists on, um, and, and I consider medical professional scientists. I consider, you know, if you're a doctor and you're, you know, you're uh, involved in in the the practice of medicine, uh, you're somewhat of a scientist. Um, so I, I would like to, uh, I'd like to go over uh, quite a few things with you. Um, so one of the things I'd like to start out with tonight is uh, is talking about vaccines, because it's very timely. Uh, there's, it's flu season. And last year's flu, uh, as I understand it, was uh, pretty god awful. What was it? Uh, was it like thirty thousand people last year? Uh, they estimate eighty thousand deaths oh, in the United eight. States from influenza. Damn eight it! Zero. I understand. Yeah, eight eight zero eight thousand people. Um, that's amazing. Is that a high number? Is, it, is that seems? That's, that, I know it's high, but is it higher than normal? It's higher than normal. Most years, I hate to say only, because you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to be only. But twenty or thirty thousand quiet years, maybe ten. The worst okay. flu season of all time was nineteen eighteen, nineteen nineteen. It killed six hundred and twenty-five thousand Americans in three months. God, which is why you know that's why ID doctors always fret about influenza because you know if you had a similar outbreak, it would kill like one point two. What's three percent of three hundred million? A lot of people. <laughs> Well, I can't like do 900,000 people or something like that. Yeah, a phenomenal amount of people. And to put that in perspective, um, if you total up all the deaths from combat and all our wars put together, it's still not as many people who died as died of influenza in 1918-19. So Christ. flu can kill. So, you know, every year it comes by, we always worry in my field that it's not going to be another horrible pandemic strain. Yeah. So let me let me ask you something. The um, flu of, I want to say it was 2011, 2012, that where they were, maybe it was even earlier, where there was some uh, fear that there was going to be some crossover with the bird flu and the H1N1 and the, the, whatever happened with that? I've lived through so many flu seasons, I can't tell you that specific one. Like, but it was I, I maybe it was just over uh, publicized that year because I remember I did a lot of in, I'm a sign language interpreter by trade and I remember okay. that year I did so much interpreting um, in classes I do I do a lot of college classes and there was so much talk about it that year alone uh, it was it was ridiculous. and I remember that year I did right 
Hmm. Sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that particular. Okay. The last big sort of brouhaha was the swine flu, which is what, 2007? Okay, yeah, uh, maybe that's what it was. And the swine, the, oh, it was the swine and the H1N1. H1 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 bird. The bird. I think H1 the H1 birds yeah. and the pigs were gonna, were they gonna, they were gonna have a new, they were gonna have sex and have a new flu or something. I think that's ex it's exactly what happens. Yeah. So I'm trying to come up with bird and pig condoms to prevent that from happening. Okay. <laughs> Good. Oh, God. But that's really how it happened. And and then you know I was watching uh, so I watched the movie Contagion, which I really liked uh, for for great many reasons. Um, as, as those types of movies go, I thought that was pretty top notch. And 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 I'll like to ask you your opinion on that in a second. But you know I hadn't noticed that that uh, like I hadn't thought of bats being a spreader of of flu type stuff. But apparently in that the the premise was is that uh, it came from bats. Um, and that that's oh, just met, really interesting. Guano, you remember the right? SARS epidemic from what 10, 12 years ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that started probably from bats in China, and oh, it was God. people eating the bats, probably from cooks. Hey, if yeah. you're hungry, you eat anything. Yeah, so sure, they, ate, sure. <laughs> they ate the bats. They got the coronavirus that came from bats, and that spread across the world. Now, would it have been from undercooked, though, more so, or it didn't matter how well it was cooked? <laughs> oh, I'm curious. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, know. I don't I, mean to be funny. I, no, no, I think it was the prep that did it. Okay. I don't think there's a bat sushi out, <laughs> outside of maybe stately Wayne manor that would just be batty <laughs> yeah like bat sushi no way bat sashimi yeah. all the way <laughs> right yeah all right it would be bat sashimi wouldn't it yeah. <laughs> oh i can oh. change my joke <laughs> you're welcome Oh no! Just oh, whew. but that. What did so? What did you think of Contagion as as a movie? I think I, I personally think they did that pretty well. What did you think? I never saw the movie. Oh really? Oh, you never saw it? Yeah. Okay. I tend to avoid seeing stuff in my field because it drives me nuts to watch okay. it. I right. can't watch. I can't watch House uh, or all the medical shows because <laughs> there's only one medical show that I think ever gotten got it right, and that was Scrubs. And yeah, that was really? that was the only one I thought was fairly close to my world. The others are just such crap; it drives you nuts. Right. Ah. What yeah, you don't so think I don't that you have some strange disease that comes in every week and is in, is, in, is sawed within a couple of days uh, of, of being able to figure out you know some bizarre strange thing that one guy can figure out by being a jerk? No. Uh, that you just described my job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. Right. <laughs> well, the jerk part you got down pat. Yeah, right. thank you very much. <laughs> so, so all right. So let, let's talk about let's talk about the the flu shot. So I okay. I have nothing against the flu shot and never have. And I have never gotten it before this year. I keep meaning to, like, I'm not against it in any way. And I keep saying, oh, yeah, I got to get the, I got to get the shot. And then sometime around March, I'm like, damn, I never got that shot. And this year, uh, I think it was October, uh, beginning of October, I was like, nope, I'm getting it. And I just stopped everything and I went and got the shot. Um, Thank you. But, but, but what do you, like, I know people have reservations about, about getting the flu shot, but can we tackle a few of these things? Like, you know, people say, uh, oh, you know, I got the flu shot and I got the flu, and, and that's, like, not real, right? Well, yes and no. The flu shot, unfortunately, the vaccine is probably our worst um, vaccine. So most years it's only about eh, 50 70% effective in preventing the flu. So you may still get the flu. Mm -hmm. Um but the problem with the flu is that people use the term flu um, way too broadly and nonspecifically. And uh, like the flu for me is a high fever, bad muscle aches, and you're trying to cough your spleen out. There's no, there's no such thing as a stomach flu. How do, I mean, your stomach can't cough. It's, <laughs> it's not a thing. And so people use the terms, um, and I ask patients, you know, what do you mean by the flu? And they tell me symptoms that often have little to do with influenza. But if you get the shot, you're less likely to get the flu. If you get the flu, you're less likely to die. If you get the flu, you're less likely to end up in the hospital. If you end up in the hospital, you're less likely to end up in the ICU. And if you end up in the ICU, you're less likely to die. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. I always right. look at it like seatbelts. If I'm going to have a header with a drunken driver, I'd rather do it wearing seatbelts. Mm -hmm. um, oh, if point. I walk into flu season, I'd rather have some protection. 
Right. And I'm sure there are people that say, oh, I don't need protection. They all have 12 or 14 kids. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's not 100%, but it's better than nothing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I have to get one every year. I work in a hospital setting um, for the past couple of years, and uh, we've, we're like mandatory. And yeah. it it boggles my mind that there are some nurses who are so vehemently against it. Um, but I mean, nurses are people too. Nurses are not, not all you know rational, um, science based thinkers, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. But uh, no, it's, it's yeah. Um, is is the actual flu or whatever they call a flu? Is it always going to be either bacterial or um, viral, or is it is it it, it could be any combination? <clears throat> no, it's always viral, isn't it? Yeah, to be picky, um, influenza usually is um, a... three related viruses that okay. circulate every year. So there's usually two influenza A's and usually an influenza B. Okay. Yeah. So and different years, there's different A's and different B's, but influenza. Uh, is is a virus right and sometimes there's others and there's cat flu and there's dog flu and there's a horse flu and there's all sorts of animals have their own flu and a bird flu mm -hmm. and one flew over the cuckoo's nest so <laughs> so yeah i i recently just got over something and i know that it wasn't the flu but it felt i felt like i got hit by a truck um, because my doctor, that's called a car accident. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> um, but my doctor gave me, uh, and she's not very, she's not the one, uh, and I think we're going to get into this a little more talking about, um, uh, more about, uh, uh, any bacteria, you know, or, um, antibiotics, but she did give me an antibiotic. Uh, and she said that there was something going around and she wanted to make sure because uh, me working you know, at a hospital at University of Maryland, she said that there was a student who was just killed from this one, you know, really bad um, bacteria that was going around. So yeah, that, that's a question I have. So there's, there's been times I've gone to the doctor and I've known people go to the doctor and they, they have a cold, which is generally usually rhinovirus, right? right. Uh, or, or type of rhinovirus. And then, the, you know, or it's it's the flu, which is influenza, another virus. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, my doctor gave me antibiotics. I'm always like, why? Why would they give you antibiotics? Antibiotics don't do, it doesn't do anything for viral. So why, I mean, why do doctors prescribe antibiotics when it's clearly a virus like I, I, what i mean by this is that they didn't go in with a sinus infection that, that came from the complex as a complication from having you know stuffed up nose from the the virus they literally just got it because they had the flu or or cold yeah uh i there's a lot <clears throat> there's a lot of reasons why people do that um and but i think the main reason is diagnostic uncertainty you often don't really know what the patient has. And you know, it's a wide variety of things. So even if you think it's a cold, well, maybe it's this. And if they get sicker, you're, the patient will get into trouble. I don't know any doctors who really practice because they're afraid of being sued. But I do know a lot of people who practice because they're afraid of hurting patients. They don't want their patients to do badly. And right. so I think they default to antibiotics out of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which, you know, because they don't have a quick diagnosis at hand to say what you got. Right, right. Because the human body's complex, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and it's not just it's not just the symptoms that something causes on a broad range. I mean, we're all different. You know, we all respond to things differently. Like what would kill one person won't kill another person for whatever magical reason of of their body, right? Um, yeah, it's not magical. But no, no, I I say that I magically. You know, <laughs> no, no, no. I know a lot of what I do and and think about. I often think is it's basically magic because I can say the words, but I feel like I'm doing a Harry Potter spell. Streptococcus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. We're gonna get a blah 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 blah. It sounds magical to me. Yeah, I, sure. I, I use a stethoscope though instead of a wand. Right. You know, I'm listening. To, yeah, I was listening to Puscast, and I'm waiting for a demon to come up out of my engine. You know, because <laughs> of yeah. all the the magical Latin -y words that you're saying. Um, <laughs> But you, so, all right. So, eighty thousand people died last year from from the flu, and that's just in the United States. Sure. Um, and now, is this is this mostly? Now, a lot of times, it, you know, it targets older people or very young people. But from what I was reading, it it actually hit a lot of uh, hit a lot of people that weren't in those two categories, like like healthy people. I actually don't remember. That seems right from my memory as to who exactly died from the flu last year. And then aren't certain strains, um, so certain strains, if, if you're older, like a lot of times, 
or not a lot of times, but there's been times. And I think the H1N1 that, that, that did a lot of damage, um, wasn't it something that it, it had come around like 30 years before, something very similar, and those people had more of an immunity to, to it than the younger people because they had been exposed to something very similar? Um, yeah, the, the strain hit out in pigs for 50 years. And right. then like it often does, then came out of uh, pigs and into humans, H1N1. And uh, there were 50 years where nobody was exposed to it. So nobody had immunity who was roughly under age 55. Hmm. And that's right. why it was such a bad flu year. Right, right. So what do you... All right, so you've spoken about this many times, um, and and I don't want to be I don't want to go on this on a long because I mean you've got plenty of blog posts about this kind of stuff, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I just want to touch on it because some of our listeners, uh, you know, don't listen to a lot of science. Uh, they're they're a lot of gamers and 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 you know some people into science fiction and stuff. They do enjoy science, but you know I mean I'm like I do a lot of reading on it, um, but anti-vaxxers, the, the the people who are, are against vaccines because of I don't know one crazy reason or another. Um, so there's, uh, you know, I've been noticing, I've been watching and we, and we kind of all, a lot of us have, uh, the rising rates in these, these pockets where they have denial of, of vaccines, you know, like these areas in California, several areas in California, some of them in the Midwest. Um, how bad is this? I mean, how bad is this getting? Uh, I may actually see my first case of measles at the rate that it's going. Oh, I mean, geez. for most vaccines, you need to have around 95% plus Oregon, I know is down to. 90% kids vaccinated. Herd immunity, right? That's yeah. what they call it. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it may reach a point where we could have a really good outbreak of measles or other vaccine preventable illnesses. Measles would be the big one to worry about because that one can kill. Uh, the others are not quite as bad as measles, but measles is also probably the second most infectious disease out there. Yeah. So it's highly contagious. Right. It's like crazy contagious, right? I mean, yeah. it's like ridiculous. Almost 100% likelihood you'll get yeah. you'll you'll get, you'll get it get if you're it. exposed to it. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's just nuts. I mean, like if you had an unexposed population and measles was introduced to it, almost everybody would get it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, and um, some kids yeah. would die and some would get uh this kind of uh measles brain rot that would kill them later. It's a nasty right. disease. Yeah. And you get you get blindness from it too. Can't you go blind from it? from it yeah pete did you do you have the measles uh um injection from before they got it down you know what i'm talking about that that that's mark on people's oh that's, small oh, that's smallpox no i don't oh. have it. okay I don't have it. oh all right i i don't know why i thought that was measles they, but yeah they, they stopped they stopped giving it like a year or two before i would have gotten it no, that's smallpox. Measles, you get a six 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 on your forehead. Oh, right. I have that. No, actually, actually, when I was a kid, I got I I I got measles. I think they didn't have the measles vaccine until when? Was it eighties? Was it the eighties? No, I was in the it was in the sixties because I was in the original measles vaccine trials. Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe I did get it, but I I can you still get the measles if you if you? Oh yeah, uh, no no vaccine one hundred percent. Okay, so you could still have gotten it. Okay, yeah, measles. So Maybe I didn't get to, I don't know. I, I know, I know when I was a kid, I had the measles and, um, yeah. are you sure and, you didn't have chicken pox? Oh, I got chicken pox too. That was later. Oh, I got chicken pox when I was 21. Oh, oh lucky you. That's fun. Yeah, it was good times. Good times. I'm, I'm not interested in syphilis. What's that? I'm not interested in when you got syphilis. Oh, okay. Me neither. <laughs> so <laughs> nobody is. No, I got, so yeah. So when I was, I was 21. I got, uh, I got chicken pox. It was New Year's Eve. Uh, when it, I was like, well, New Year's Eve fell right in the middle of when I was sick. And I, I still, to this day, I thank my buddy, Zach, one of my, another one of my best friends. He, uh, he, he stayed home with me. Like we, we were going to go out to the bars and go drinking for New Year's Eve and do all that kind of stuff. And he's just like, no, nah, man, I'll hang out with you. I, I got to hand it to him. That was really cool of him to do that. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Just he sacrificed his New Year's Eve for To be with a contagious person. Yeah. He could, well, he'd already had it, I think, or oh, something. Okay. His, 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 his brother or something had it. Um, but yeah, and so, but now they have, they have, did they, again, another one, did they have the, when did the chicken pox vaccine come out? Uh, I so lose track of time at my no, age. I mean, was, is, is it 10, recent? 20 years, 10, 20 years ago. 10, 20, okay, so I, I'm too old for it. I wouldn't have gotten it. That's the one I think probably came out a little later that, that I didn't get. Um, but anyway, so now I, I look forward to shingles, but I have been told that I can get a shingles vaccine. Yeah, that'll so be shingles. 
I think I need I think I need to do that because I hear the so, shingles is the shingles is not good. No, my mom had it really bad um, a yeah. number of years ago. But so having the chicken pox, you can we can still it's not too late then we can get a shingles vi- uh, vaccine. Is it is it recommended that we wait a little while though? Being in our forties uh, ish ish, you're too young. You okay. have to you have to be a senior like me. That's all right. Oh, uh, you know what? I want them to take all the time they want to refine it. So that's good. That's, <laughs> I want a better, stronger, faster vaccine. Well, yeah, and the, the nanobots, the tracking nanobots they put in the vaccine now are not quite as good. The batteries die after about five weeks. That's no good. So right. hopefully in the future it'll be better that way. Yeah. I heard they were going to recharge mm-hmm. them with, with uh, chemtrails, that you'd be able to breathe <laughs> the chemtrails in and it would recharge yeah. them. It didn't work as well as they thought. Yeah, uh, technology isn't quite what you want it to be. <laughs> yeah, eventually they'll and eventually they'll land on the moon too. So, uh, so you know, I think some of this stuff, um, I think, comes from people's misunderstanding. I mean, like, well, I know it comes from the misunderstanding of science. They obviously, they, there's a lot of core things that they're not getting. Uh, when when it comes to understanding things like vaccines and and medical studies and all that good stuff, um, but but what do you think the the major psychology is behind people who are who are like not just not just they don't vaccinate the, their kids or themselves, but they like actually go on these like marches <clears throat> and they they get online and they're uh, and they're angry like really angry about it. Do you have any idea where that comes from, or do you have well a lot of that? it comes. They think it's going to hurt their children and they'll, they'll worry that they cause autism, which is not true. I mean, they've looked very aggressively and they can't find any relationship between vaccines and autism. But if you have a, if you have a kid, I mean, you don't like giving your kids shots. So right. it's mostly fear for protecting your children. Hey, speak for yourself. I, want, <laughs> I, 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 I believe in better living through chemicals. <laughs> No, but I mean, I think of it like this, you know, every, everything you put in your body is, is a potential uh, infection of some kind or a poison or toxin or whatever. Everything enters your body. You breathe it in, you eat it, you, uh, you know, it, if you're, you're cleaning your house and you get it on your skin and it's something that can get into your skin or you're, you're cleaning and then you rub your eye and you get the thing. So, you know, if a vaccine, I think it's just the needle. I think it's the needle phobia. It's like, oh, you're putting it right into the blood. It's like, yeah, well, you inhale it. There's a membrane that goes right into your, I mean, it's so simple for something to pass that membrane into your blood. Uh, and it'll be the same person who's saying this. It's smoking a cigarette while they're telling you this. Like, I wouldn't put that poison in my kids and they're and blowing smoke all over their kids and stuff. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't uh, think people are thinking about you know, thinking about oh, uh, they are, but people have trouble uh, balancing risk and benefit. Right. I mean, I remember a guy I had who was a heroin user. He drank. Uh, he lived on the street. He drank uh, twenty-four bottles of beer a day. He had an infection on his heart valve, and he wasn't doing well. And I told him, "Ah, we need to get a chest X-ray just to make sure." And he refused because he didn't want the radiation. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. That's that's yeah. actually sad. That that's it's, actually sad. True story. Um, right. I mean, you just people have real trouble. Um, I mean, your real risk is not the vaccine; it's driving to your doctor's office. Yes, yes. Right. I was going to say that. I was going to say, you know, people they're worried about the needle, but they don't give a crap about getting in their car and driving the, the ten miles to the doctor when that is like the most dangerous thing you can do. Yeah, that's why I'm in boutique medicine. I have my doctor come here because it's very dangerous out there. Yeah, right. or you'll kill your doctor on the way in. That's right. Better him than me. And he may have a handgun on him. You don't know. Yeah. Right. So you're, right. I mean, what kills people, you know, handguns and cars, not vaccines. That's right. right. Guns kill people, not doctors. <laughs> and they, I think, you know, and, and some of these, some of the people I see are younger. So I, I'm 48. Mike is what? What are you, Mike? 46? Uh, yes. Yes, I am, actually. Okay. Um, so I'm 427 know, we, in dog years. Right. <laughs> we, we grew up, you know, I remember polio being a thing. Like, I remember that there were still people with polio like it was a it was a thing like the polio vaccine was out and people weren't getting it anymore but it wasn't eradicated it was still in the world and people still got it people in america were still i think people in america were still getting it but it was getting it was becoming wiped out um you know and there were i remember the pictures of people in iron lungs and you know people walking around on crutches and stuff like that and i grew up like remembering that as a child and 
I think a lot of people have forgotten just, you know, like the wonder of what vaccines has done for us. Like, like you don't want us to go back there. Believe me, you don't want that yeah. again. Well, that's very true. I mean, mm -hmm. people don't remember how bad it used to be. Yep. Right. And, you know, we're coming up on that with, uh, unfortunately, I think we're coming up on that with antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria and such. Um, you know, let, let's, I'm going to, I got a hey, Mike in the notes. I'm going to skip down to the next one because uh, I'm going to segue. Well, not, <laughs> not the super bug. We're not going to talk about the super bugs. No, that's I what I want to talk about. That's oh, what okay. We are. All right. So, yeah, yeah I, I call in my notes. I have it as the coming bacterial apocalypse. You know, that sounds um, much better. I hate yeah. super bugs. <laughs> how the, he sensationalizes everything. Yeah, you should, how you should hear him talk awesome about. As well. You should hear when he comes back from the bathroom. Right, right. No, I mean, like we do. We got. <laughs> we've got a potential. I mean, it's not. It's not set in stone, but it's looking. Could happen. Um, we got all these superbugs coming around. The, the uh, bacteria that are completely resistant to everything that we know. Um, TB now is back. You know, they got the super TB, which is basically hardly treatable right and cut part of your lung out to get rid of it yeah it's the uh, bacteria are slowly becoming uh more and more resistance it's all applied evolution unfortunately yeah and yeah. so tb just basically has been using um antibiotics as a as a i guess a eradicator uh i don't quite understand the question what is what are they typically using to eradicate tb or it, they have been doing for the past 15, 20 years. Is it just antibiotics or is it? Yeah, some other we've medicine? had antibiotics for a while, since the 50s to treat tuberculosis. Okay. So there's eh, eight drugs. There's four main ones and four to six sort of secondary ones. Okay. But the problem that they've done in the world, which is, is nice, is that the problem is if you give single drug therapy to people with tuberculosis, just one antibiotic, it gets resistant to it. And then you give mm -hmm. another single drug and it gets resistant to that one. And then you give another single drug and it gets resistant to that one. So they did a lot of that in the old Soviet Union. So oh. there's a, is this a not safe for work kind of podcast? Or? Yeah, man, go ahead. Let it out. Oh, okay. yeah. So there's a shitload of um, resistance to tuberculosis coming out of places like the old Soviet Union, where they right. basically bred it. So it's very nice of them. So what oh, you're fantastic. saying is they've, not only is everything else that the Russians have, are being accused of, now they're being accused of TB tampering. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you but know what? Mike, up. Mike huh. they're, they're, they're mess not only are they messing with the you know, social media, they're re messing with regular media. You know, now I'm get it's on my TB. I got Russia yeah. coming in on the oh, TB. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Sorry. That's, that's my last TB joke. Sorry. So, Promise? Yes, yes, I promise. Okay. So you know, TB I also continued heard, to be yeah, and that was you. So I heard that. Um, <laughs> I've, I've also read that that India is a really bad breeding ground for antibiotic resistant bacteria. Like they, I heard the Gan was it the Ganges has some really super nasty soup, uh, uh growing in it. Yeah, there's one. Um, uh, it's called the new. It's called uh, the medical term is the New Delhi beta lactamase. And it didn't come out of the local sandwich shop. It came out of New Delhi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, okay. it basically uh, degrades the, it's an enzyme that degrades all penicillin type antibiotics. Huh. So That's it's, serious. it's very bad. I think they uh, call that area the New Delhi bodega. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the, the New Delhi um, chamber of commerce raised objections and didn't want it to be known because it thought it, it degraded the name of New Delhi. And they wanted the name changed. I suggested the chrysalis beta lactamase because all ads is good ads. Yes, you've always right? wanted yeah, something sure. named after you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it, even something that kills everybody. Yeah, and then that jumped into an E. coli, and then it spread around the world basically in our butts. Um, you think you're smart, and you think you're clever, and you think you're cool, but fundamentally we are all just sentient transport media for bacteria. Yeah. And so it jumped from the New Delhi water into our colon, and we took it around the world in 747s. Wait, 747s don't fly anymore, do they? I don't know. Do they? Uh, Aren't they retired? I don't know. 737s. Uh, no, not on JetBlue. <laughs> I think they, they fly anything. Okay. <laughs> the wings actually flap on yes. JetBlue. They have ornithopters. So, um, God, wait a minute.
Oh, I lost my train of thought. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Uh, no, uh, so where I was going to go with that is, is like, okay, so what are we doing about this? What, I mean, what can we do about this? Are there, are there, I keep reading about these new possible antibiotics. Like uh, this one article I read, they were talking about, uh, they started looking in the soil for antibiotics and they found a whole, like a whole new strain, a whole new family of antibiotics that, that, that look promising. Yeah. It was in Scotland or something, but right. it'll take 10 or 15 years to get to um, a new antibiotic we can use in patients. But here's the spooky thing. Two interesting things. One, they went to nowhere Canada, where no human had ever tread foot as best they could tell. And they took a sample of dirt, and they took it to the lab, and they found 15 different antibiotic resistance genes, half of which had never been seen before. Hmm. They also went to this cave that had been completely separated from the world for like million years or 500,000 years or some phenomenal time. And they sampled the bacteria in there and they found resistance genes to all the common uh, bacteria or antibiotics we have. So if they find a new antibiotic, you know that there's a resistance gene floating around at the same place. So these are all just temporary um, fixes to the problem of um, evolution. So right. it's nice that they come up with new ones in the dirt, but we'll find resistance in no time it's oh, inevitable so so cherry uh, okay. so mm. so i i, I also read this no, it's called job security right <laughs> job security. There's, I, there's something called phage, right. phage therapy and i heard the russians were dinging around with this um is is that is that a possibility you know like uh, viruses that infect bacteria yeah they kill bacteria it would yeah. be nice if they get it to work but if you won't take a vaccine, you <laughs> you gonna let them squirt you up with a phage? Right, I know, I right? Know. Well, it's like you're not shooting a virus in me. What if it starts killing me? It's like, well, but it doesn't attack humans at all. You're not again. You're not setting your phagers to kill. Uh, you can mm -hmm. set them to stun, and that's it. Correct. Yeah, yes. But I mean, is is there a danger? Could a could a phage mutate to to affect humans, or is that just like is that like apples and I mean, is that a complete is that a ridiculous I, idea? My knowledge of the biology would be no, it can't. Right, it's it's because like, there's too many different things there, right? Yeah, now, we're most back, most pathogens that cause disease are very specific to cells and organisms. Right, so it'd be unlikely. Hmm. Right, because most most bacteria has no effect on us at all, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, probably less than 5% of the bacteria around can actually infect human beings. The vast majority aren't, don't do that. They have better things to do. Right. Other right. things We're to more eat. bacteria resistant than any bacteria. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, you in know, fact, there are more bacteria in and on you than there are cells of you. Yeah. Yeah, that I, and, and I never like that right. fact. As a matter of fact, I usually pretend that that doesn't exist. But yeah, no, thanks. no, I, dude. Once, once I realized that, I knew I'd never be alone again. Oh, <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> Although it depends, there are some ecosystems in your body that are uh, 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 being messed with because uh, the pubic louse is going um, extinct because people are shaving. So, thank God. <laughs> thank God. So, you might want to. So some parts of your body they have less than others. You know, I, I I'm of the old school. I don't mind a nice little uh, patch, but you know what? If it's gonna wipe out, if it's gonna wipe out crotch lice, then you know what? I'll yeah. have to suffer. Yeah. I'll have to it's suffer. becoming extinct in the West. Oh, man, you know they're 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 gonna evolve and become crotchless lice. <laughs> crotchless <laughs> lice. The bear kind, bear lice, uh, right? Yeah. There's a scary thought, right? <laughs> Well, they got a home on me. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny. So, so my daughter came home, uh, and she had, you know, her. They had a, a lice thing in her school and stuff, and you know, they were doing the 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 shampoo and the hair with the combs and stuff. And uh, so I looked up, you know, looked up head lice and and on the internets uh, just to make sure. And it said that uh, it said that I was immune to it because I, you know, have a bald head. They only live on your head. Head lice do. Yeah. Body lice will live wherever. Uh, so I was just like, well, I'm not even worried about it then because, you know, I'm like, ooh, ooh, cue ball. So I'm not, not sweating, not sweating head lice one bit. So it's nice that, that being bald does something for you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm surprised Paul hasn't made any bald, you know, three bald men and three goatees comments no, in, the, he, in the chat. No, he did either. make a comment earlier. Paul, oh. 
Paul has this thing. He he wants the next super bug to come along. He's like, the world has got too many people. We cut that number in half and we'll be in a good place. He's all, he's always, yeah. Well, considering that the first bug to be totally resistant will likely be gonorrhea at the rate things are going. That's oh, scary. really? Oh, yeah, that's Ooh. right. Oh, I did Barry, read about the that. lead. Apparently, yeah, gonorrhea. They, isn't, didn't they have the first patient that has gonorrhea that's untreatable? Yeah. Like, in, that's it? In, that's, no, it's, not a, it's not a fatal illness. No, it's just not pleasant. No. Hmm. Oh. Well. All right. And, well, uh, where where do you go from here? Actually, I I do. All right. So so Mark, I have um. I can ruin okay. any conversation. What's that? <laughs> it's a <laughs> superpower. No, I yeah. love it. I love it. I, I'm great for stopping all conversations at parties. <laughs> I you know here's here's one that I'm sure is a killer. What is pus made out of? What is pus? Pus is, is what? It's made of what? Pus is my life. But, okay. Um, white cells mostly. Okay. So just dead white cells? Bacteria. Yeah. So, okay, so it's, it's not as gross as somebody would think then, right? I mean, it's just you. It's just dead yeah. parts of you. Yeah. But quite frankly, all of you is disgusting. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I mean, not so, you, you, but no, no, I know, I know, but but me, me too. You know. <laughs> is there is there a a particular name or a, a professional name uh, nomenclature for the pieces of or like I guess it would be like from either bacteria or um, um, viruses that you know the excrement of them, you know, because a lot of times people just think, oh, I'm coughing up some, you know stuff that's not me it, that this is part of the the thing but is there any are there anything that like uh, byproducts of of um bacteria or viruses that that you're that you're uh, hacking is, up is it yeah, strewn I mean, about I mean, our bodies yeah i mean yeah i mean the excrement of many bacteria and yeast is alcohol so nice. w when you're enjoying your ipa tonight you're basically drinking yeast shit yeah. <laughs> mm, mm. Yummy yeast. I don't, think there's a, I don't think there's a real technical term for that. And well, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. I mean, if it comes from the lung, it's called sputum and pus if it's from an abscess, I guess. Yeah, my, I, my favorite thing is to hawk up a big chunk of gray mass from my lung, and I'm always just like, oh, there goes a piece of that lung. But but that is part of you. That is your body. That is not yeah. byproducts from the well, it's infestation. It's, it's a little, little above. Thing. Yeah. A little above. It's okay. It's white cells, whatever's causing the infection, protein. And, okay. yeah. and if you want to see what I had for lunch, do that sometime. Oh God! Yeah. Ah, okay, <laughs> thirty years of doing this, and I still puke when people cough stuff up. Oh really? That's like, wow. Yeah, that's my kryptonite. Oh, wow. interesting. I can, I've seen all sorts of unbelievably awful things, and they don't bother me. But if you cough, if you honk up a loogie, <laughs> so I, wait a minute. I am, hold on, hold on. I have, I have seen, I've seen infections. Uh, my my cousin runs an assisted living, so he has a lot of older people and sometimes they get like they'll get bed sores and stuff like yeah. that and 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 you know sometimes they run away like he'll take them to the doc does everything he's supposed to and that sore will still keep you know getting bad until they they start packing they put the packing and stuff in it yeah. i saw them remove packing from a wound once and i thought i was going to lose it so you can yeah. i mean you can sit through that but not hacking up a lung no, it's my it's my kryptonite we all have okay. our one thing that you know oh i uh, Mike and knows what mine is, I've, right? I've, uh, yes. Uh, B.O., right? Very, very close. B yes, B.O., and uh-huh. Uh that would no, be it. I have our weaknesses. I don't know what it is, but I just can't deal with that. Right. Um, yeah, I've, I've worked in the hospital center. I've done emergency on-call interpreting for 20 years, yeah. and I have seen some some amazing things, uh, you know, like being in the room when they're doing a um, – a, uh, an uh, not a colonoscopy because that would be a endoscopy. Yeah, an endoscopy and uh, just seeing what, you know, what the lining looks like all the way down to the stomach and what the, you know, the actual sphincter of the stomach and, you know, is and all that stuff. Uh, I've seen some things, but I tell you, I only passed out once and I don't know why other than, you know, it was a, a rather large woman and they were um, trying to do a central line 
And I mean, the, the, the doctor was just, I mean, he was digging, like he was digging for gold in and out, in and out, right, left, all, all over the place. And the next thing I know, I sit on the floor and the nurse caught me. <laughs> I was like, whew. Dr. Hammond. He's like, oh, yeah. I don't feel so good. <laughs> I, I, really? I tell you, like I, it, it happens you, you're so quick that, that, that lightheadedness. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So, before we before we get into we're going to play a game in just a short bit i and mark i really went all, i went all out on this game mike it's going to be a jet par nerdy um, i know it is and i i just i guarantee i know it's just it's going to it's going to accentuate some people and uh degradate others it, it might it might be yeah. a little yeah uh-huh. anyway <clears throat> so uh one of the things that i have noticed and you've talked about this in on your podcast so, and anyway hey, and we're going to we're going to give out the links in a few minutes but anyone um you know, Mark, you haven't been doing the, the quack cast lately, but uh, they're still all they're still all up there, and they're great, and they're still I, they're, a lot of them, many of them are completely relevant, extremely um, cromulent. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, but one of the things that that I know that that people miss uh, is when they they you know they see these medical studies, so they see uh, you know they'll be reading. Oh, I read an article that this cures that, or this fixes that, or this causes that. Um, and it'll be on something like natural news or, or whatever, one of these nutty sites. And, you know, I always say, well, well, where's the sources? And then sometimes I've even gone to the sources and it takes me to another web page that is just another article that some knucklehead has written that doesn't have any, uh, sources of its own. Or I've even once gotten into a circular reference where the one page referenced the other one, which referenced that one, just to give it some validity that they had sources. Yeah. Um, but but what are the, some of the things you look for? You so you see a you see a medical st- some sighting of a medical study and they're saying something that should trigger a red flag like something that is horseshit you know something that like you know uh, any sniffing, statistic <laughs> sniffing cow poop cures you know brain cancer or something like that it does? And you just you're right and you just go you go this can't be right and then like. You, what I do is I go. I need to read the study itself. I don't. I don't want to read what people talked about the study or people, other people's analysis, which I don't mind if it's somebody I trust. But I still like to be able to go to the the, the study itself. Um, what do you look for in that study to help you determine whether it has any merit whatsoever? Uh, probably the best thing is large numbers of people. Right. Sample size. Well, right? I mean, sample size is the most important. Because you got to have a lot of people to be to really show a difference, and then the other thing is that they call it significant. You know, usually in medicine they use a p value of 0.01 if it's that's significant. That's probably not true. It's probably more like 0.001. Right. Um, and and basically, my take is that probably everything I read is wrong. <laughs> so right, I don't. It, and it is. Uh, they're all bad studies, poorly done, and it just. You know, you have, and part of what you also have to do is take them into the context of all the other studies, biologic plausibility, does it make sense? But most of the ones you see out there are very small numbers of poorly chosen patients that it doesn't mean much. Right. You know, and they're more, they're more hypothesis generating articles rather than hypothesis mm. proving articles. Right, right. And like also when you see like a medical trial, like they'll say, oh, in medical trials it does this. But like we have to watch what stage the medical trial is in, right? Because I mean yeah. like a stage one medical trial doesn't give you answers. It just gives you better questions, right? Exactly. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, f- from what we're seeing, it's actually worth doing a big study. But that's all it's worth. It's not – you can't say that this is curing anything yet. But what you can say is it looks promising, but we need to we need to do a bigger study to really say anything about it, right? Right. It's amazing how much stuff has gone by the wayside in the thirty years I've been doing this stuff. It's just yeah. they say yeah, half yeah. they say half of what you learn in medical school isn't true. Will turn out not to be true. <laughs> it seems to be that yeah. way. Really? I mean, drugs I, I mean we everybody had on asthma was on aminophilin when I was a resident. People everybody on heart failure was in on digitox, digoxin, and no one uses either of them anymore because they don't work. Hmm. Wow. Two really good examples. Nice. Okay. All right. All right. So I want to take, we did get one question um, for, from the from the chat room, and that is Paul Noons asked, when is the next, what, or sorry, what, what is the next smallpox? Any idea? What's, what's going to be the next, uh, if you had to guess, like, 
Probably smallpox. <laughs> Probably smallpox. Oh, you think? You think it could come back? Well, there's sort of two. There's sort of two things. One, there's still smallpox in the world. It's in uh, old, rusty Soviet facilities and U.S. facilities. So right. it could be released from there. But there, it's kind of an interesting question. One of the things that happens is that uh, since no one's getting the smallpox vaccine anymore. Uh, Monkeypox, for example, is starting to be seen more in human beings, which is very closely related to smallpox. Oh, shit. And you don't get it from monkeys, though it's called monkeypox. And one of the things you'd wonder about is if one of these days a monkeypox will jump to humans, like the simian HIV jumped into humans to cause AIDS, or right. measles actually probably jumped from cows, uh, a disease called rinderpest that became yeah. the human measles. So maybe the next smallpox will be smallpox. Oh. I worry about bird flu. Yeah. Mm. That's the one that keeps me from inhaling at night. Oh, so wow. those are the, but maybe smallpox. Because uh, something like bird flu, that'll, <clears throat> that'll come hot and heavy, right? When it happens, it's, it's going to hit, and it's, you know, before we realize what's going on, we're yeah. going to be in the middle of it, yeah? Yeah, if it's like, you know, 1918, 1919 pandemic. Um, it could sweep the world before we could do anything. Else. The good news is the warmer the temperatures, the harder it is for bacteria to grow. So global warming is going to take care of everything. Nice. So, yeah, nice so, yeah. so you don't really have to worry because we're all going to be dead from global warming. Right. Bird okay. flu is going to gonna fly in from left field. No one's going to see it coming. Oh, yeah. That's... Nothing like That's... getting the bird, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Mark, um, uh, oh, Mike, you had some other stuff you added in here. It's so many questions, but Jesus, already uh, we got like 15 minutes, so I don't know. Okay. All right, all right, all right I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Squeeze uh, one in, Mike. All right, I got a really – this this prompted a, a probably a, an entire show idea I'd like to do um, down the road. But uh, you're out in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Great Pacific. Uh, yes. Uh, you're in Oregon, correct? Portland, yeah. Portland, yeah. So, and it's uh, marijuana is legal out there. Yeah. And uh, marijuana was just legalized uh, medically here uh, about a two years ago, and they're just now starting to kind of get to the prescriptions and you know all that legal stuff. That said, um, what is what is the what is the situation out there for that? Um, in uh, I'm thinking of it in terms of medical versus just legalizing it. I'm feeling like there are so many more um, implications and just things that can go legally and medically wrong when it's just um, when it, when when it's kind of in, in a prescription and medical um, blanket that uh, I'm wondering what what a, a state like yours is like you know is everything just sort of fine or are there issues like I'm and I'm thinking in specifically with employment implications and um, the um, you know like with testing and like you know what if you have a pres- well I guess you don't need a prescription so but like you know with people being at work and being under the influence or, and which isn't such a bad thing when you're in a uh, state where it's just legal recreationally but in a state where it is legal where it is medical like oh my doctor says I have a prescription I gotta I gotta go out at lunchtime and get high you know what I mean like is that a, as so far I haven't seen any problems with it being legalized. Okay. Uh, out here, except for one thing I can think of that, unlike cigarette smokers who know that they're producing noxious fumes that those around them don't want to inhale, dope smokers don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> 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 so it always, everywhere you go, concerts, shows, there's always one asshole who makes the room smell like a dead skunk. Can't right. you wait until after the show? <laughs> right. Evidently not. Oh, so, so, or before the show or slip off to yeah. the side or something other than that you know i don't there, i haven't seen any problems both personally and professionally from uh legalized marijuana it's just okay. that people need to learn not to smoke around people that don't enjoy the fragrance of skunk farts right <laughs> yes i agree and do you have any colleagues from other states that talk about the uh any implications from the medical uh, not that I know of. I mean, unfortunately, the literature for the research is very poor because right. you can't get it in a way. For years, you'd never be able to get it in a way that allows you to do clinical trials. Sure. So I don't know. Yeah. 
I'm, I, it's, it's so early days, but I, there's a lot of things I foresee um, with that, you know, like it, how do you test for it? You know, if someone's at work when it's medical, it's like, how do you test for it? If they're at work and you suspect it, it's like, you know, yeah. Are you for most jobs? It probably wouldn't matter. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't want my surgeon smoking or my airline pilot. I don't, I, know, I don't even I just know if my cop was. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I want my, you know, my, my uh, Big Mac getting made by someone who's a pothead, though. You know yeah. what I mean? I, oh, I don't know, man. You know, like when you're hungry and you like make something bigger, I might get like a big giant Big Mac, like three <laughs> patties on it. And she's like, hey, man, this is really good. I'm starving. Have one. <laughs> oh, Paul McCartney was stoned for 30 years and still put out some pretty good music. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. All right, let let's do the thing. Okay, so All right. everybody, make sure uh, make sure you you go online and and find Quackcast, Puscast, Gabado Pus, and Mark. We didn't even talk about your books, but you have books. You uh, you have the Pus Whisperer books, which are I think I believe they're collections of your blog posts. Yeah, I have three Pus Whisperers, um, one, two, and three, and then uh, Fly in the Ointment, which is a collection of my essays for science based medicine. Yeah. Oh, you don't write for science-based medicine anymore. Is that, did you just not have time to do it or did you? That's a little bit of time. Or... I got it. Each, each thing took like four or five nights to write. And right. I got tired of telling my wife, I can't do, go to the show tonight. I got to write a science-based medicine. I, I can't do this. I, I just, mm -hmm. and I kind of ran out of ways to write about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's hard. Uh, I like to try and be clever when I write. I'll leave it up to you whether or not I succeed. But most of the fun of writing for me is trying to come up with a funny, clever, unique way to say it. And I ran out of ways to say things. So I kind of right. factored in. And then I, I would imagine a lot of people that you're writing to, a lot of your the audience, um, it's you know, you fall into that preaching to the choir. You get a lot of people yeah. who read these articles who don't really need that information quite as much. And yeah. the people who really need to get it are not getting it. And I imagine that gets a little frustrating too. Yeah. One of the things I found since sort of leaving that world for a couple of years is how invisible it is. Yeah. I never get any of the stuff in my feeds in my, you know, if you don't go actively looking for it, you won't find it. I was it's, quite surprised at how invisible the skeptical world really is. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's scarily invisible. Like it scares me that it's that invisible because it, it, these are people, I mean, you know, they're not questioning. People are not questioning things. They're just like taking stuff on face value. And it's a little. Actually, so taking you, stuff on Facebook. If you're watching this show, look look into the skeptical community a little bit, especially if you've never heard of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to read it the most. You need, to, you, you need yeah. it more than I do. Um, all right. So you can find all of Mark's stuff at www.edgydoc.com. Uh, and I posted a link in the notes to one of his uh, one of his um, articles that is very uh, timely. It has to do with uh, getting a flu vaccine. Um, you had you had mentioned it's one of your more uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I, I'm semi quasi famous for that one. Yeah. Okay. It's basically dumbasses flu vaccine is the name. I'll let you think about it right there. Um, <laughs> so so make sure you check that out uh, and. Uh, is there anything else, Mark? Did I miss anything that you would like to like to push of your of your what, what did you call it your uh, your your uh, media uh, empire? Uh, empire? empire? Yeah. yeah. Okay. At, at Mark Chrislip uh, on Twitter. Okay. No, actually, I guess I am. I don't yeah. do that one though. Oh dear. Well, what do you use? Well, I do a daily piece of infectious disease fact called ID Factoid. Okay. That's the only place I show up on Twitter. IV Correct? or ID? ID? Infectious diseases. Okay. Not intelligent design. Infectious diseases. <laughs> gotcha. oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh, I mean, right. oh yeah, and, sure. and okay. feel, uh, look for um, Mark Chrislip's new <clears throat> Instagram. He'll be posting soon um, about uh, various loogies he gets in the office. <laughs> right. He'll be posting those. <laughs> oh. At Vomitcast. At <laughs> Vomitcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's let's do this thing here we right. go next time 
All right, everybody, it's game time with the Mythwits. I'll be your game master this week, and we are playing Jepar Nerdy. I've taken four of our games and smashed them together into a blatant Jeopardy knockoff. You'll have four categories to choose from and must start from the lowest number in a category. If you get the question right, you get the number of points in the box, and you get to pick another question. If you get it wrong, control goes to the next player. In this case, Mike or Mark. It'll just go to the next one. Uh, everyone will start with 10 points. Or wait a minute, no, we're not doing that. It's uh, I got rid of that, sorry. Uh, everybody, you get the points that, that are on the question. You'll see, because I'm getting ready to put the scoreboard up. Um, and I'm getting ready to put the, the thing up here. So let me do this. And share that with everyone. All right. So our categories this week are good bug or bad bug, and that is is this a is this a microorganism used in something beneficial like say beer or cheese or something like that? Uh, the next category is dead or alive. Is this celebrity alive or did they die from some sort of infectious disease? Uh, <laughs> Soundbite madness. Uh, I'm going to play a soundbite from, uh, from a movie that has something to do with, uh, with in, in, an infection of some kind. Uh, and then Bet the Geek is, is going to be questions, going to be uh, nerd trivia questions about zombie movies. So uh, I'm not sure who's strong on what, but uh, we're, you know, uh, some are going to be stronger me. than others on, on, on different things. Who starts? So, so here we go. So I'm going to start with um, hold on, Mark. Get the, what's that? I'm going to start with Mark. Mark is okay. our guest. He gets to go first. Oh, are you keeping score, Pete? Uh, no, dead you're keeping alive, score. Boy. Well, I can keep score. I can keep score. All right. So okay. dead or alive for one. All right. Um, give me one second here. I meant I print, printed this out earlier, and then I promptly left it. So here we go. Okay, I'm good. All, All right, right so good. Dead Sounds or like alive. what I would do. No, no, I still got it. I still got it. So dead or alive for one. Dick Van Dyke. He's alive. Oh, ah. He's alive. Yes, Dick Van Ooh. Dyke is alive. He was born in 1925. I, I, I'm supposed to read that first. Okay, and he was in such movies as Mary Poppins, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yes, he's still alive and kicking. As a matter of fact, he just did a he just did a thing somewhere where he was dancing around like a fool. He's still he's still very quite wow. spry. Most people don't know that uh, Dick Van Dyke is a stage name. He was actually born Penis Van Lesbian. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> they wouldn't All let right. him. They wouldn't let him go through Hollywood like that. So they had to make him change his name. Mark, you get to go again. <laughs> dead, dead or alive two. Dead or alive for two. Okay, Corey <laughs> Haim, born in 1971, in such movies as Lost Boys and Silver Bullet. He was uh, part of the duo of Corey and Corey, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. I, don't, I don't, have, don't have a clue, so I say he's still alive. Still alive. Incorrect. I'm sorry, Mark. Corey Haim died of pneumonia. And I think it was, uh, it was re probably related to drugs, drug use. He had a, I, a really bad I drug believe problem. that was uh, P-pneumonia. P-pneumonia. Okay. Yes. So, Mike, you're up. Mm. What category I'm would you up. like? Oh, let's go with Soundbite Madness. Yeah, All right, I... Soundbite Madness for one. Here you go. Name this movie. Five billion people died in 1996 and 1997. Lost the entire population of the world. Only about 1% of us survived. Are you going to save us, Mr. Cole? How can I save you? This already happened. That's Bruce Willis, but I don't know what movie. Ah, uh, it's Bruce Willis. He was the, it was one where he time traveled. Something monkey. No. Don't help Mike. Monkeys. Don't help him. Oh, Damn it. Don't help Tw Mike. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Hey, I owe you one. <laughs> Tar I okay. Don't help Mike. No. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, That's that, fine. Mike that is a rule in this sugar. I'm, right. help <laughs> I'm, I'm helpless and untrainable. Right. Right. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Mike needs it. Mike, what's your I next one? Uh, I'm going to go uh, with... Um... Bet the Geek for two. No, you gotta you gotta start at one. Well, then I'm gonna go Bet the Geek for three. <laughs> okay, so Bet the Geek. In the movie Zombieland, what is the delicious treat that Tallahassee is seeking? Ah, Twinkies. That what are is... Twinkies? 
That is correct, Mike. Very good. You get to go again. Bet the Geek for two. Bet the Geek for two. Okay. Who directed Night of the Living Dead? Oh, so... oh See, this was easy. If you were a big zombie fan, you would know this. I, I, God. God, I'm going to say the wrong name. Sam Raimi? Ah. Damn. George Romero. <laughs> yeah, George Romero. All right, Mark, you're on the board. What do you What do you want to do? Uh, good bug, bad bug. What you gonna do? Okay. <laughs> All right, good bug, bad bug. All right. That's a Zorax. Sorry. All right, so I'm gonna give you the name of the bug, and you tell me whether it is a good bug, something we might eat, or a bad bug that's not so good for us. All right. Whatever I say is automatically the right answer. <laughs> yeah, of course, because you're the right answer. <laughs> you're the doctor so i was i was so i was doing this game right and then i came back and i was i noticed that something i hadn't seen on yours where you had a, like a list of infectious diseases and stuff and i was like oh shit he's gonna get all of these right away all right anyway so here we go lactobacillus helveticus i'd say some people call that a good bug okay Okay, I would say yes, because it is used as a starter culture in industry for controlled fermentation. So such things as beer and such. Yeah, for sours, I prefer my yeast bases. Ah, yes. I, I do, you know, like I, I'm, I'm getting into sours. I just started, but only like the traditional sours, like the, um, uh, what do they call them? The German, uh, I, oh, I can't remember the name of it. The but, Prouts. Yeah. No. Uh, those are the ones but, uh, my, my son likes. Okay. Good bug, bad bug for two. Good bug, bad bug for two. Okay. Uh, Balamathea mandrillia mandrillaris. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's a that's a real bad bug. Yes. This is a free living amoeba. <laughs> can cause a rare and serious infection in the brain. It goes up through your nose and into your brain. Is this, hey, is that the one that people get using those neti pots, using the wrong kind yeah, of water? It's a cousin. It's a okay. cousin. It's a co okay. Co cousin Ned. Yeah. How about good bug, bad bug for three? All right. Why, why stop the streak, right, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Propiona bacterium Freud in Freud shot. Crazy. I could spell it if you like. <laughs> I think that's a bad bug, but you're going to prove me wrong on this one. Uh, Incorrect. The products of this fermentation con contribute to the nutty and sweet flavors of cheese. Wait a minute, oh. of, of what fermentation? What, 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 what is it called again? Propiona bacterium. What's the last one? Uh, Freudenrichi? Yeah, uh, Freudenrichi. Okay. <laughs> Freudenreich. Yeah. Freudenreich. Freudenreich. bacterium. All, All right, right, Mike. You Ooh. are up. Oh wow, I'm up. All right, uh, let's do sound bites for two. Sound bites for two. Okay. I'll help you again. Thanks. Sound bites for two. Here you go. The chimps are infected. Infected with what? Rage. Oh. All right, uh, on, Planet of the Apes. Mike. Did. Incorrect. God damn. Eight days later, right? 28 Days Later, correct? Oh, God, that's a good movie. Never watched Damn. that at 2 in the morning. I yeah, haven't I love watched that. I haven't you know, seen people, that in 10 years. People argue with me. They say it's not a zombie movie, but it is, even though they're not really like zombies. it's To me, it's the zombie genre. It has the feel. It has all yeah. the components yeah. of a zombie movie. All yeah, right. Uh, ah, why you, we, sound yeah. bites for three. Sound bites for three. All right, here we go. Out a virus comes here and two kids die. And we could have stopped it right then and there, but we don't because we have to protect the perfect biological weapon. Oh, that's uh, Dustin Hoffman. That's Dustin Hoffman. I know. I, I can tell that too. What is what, it? What did you say? Any contagion? I'm sorry, what no. was it? Contagion? Dustin Hoffman? No? No. Nope. Sorry. That was Outbreak. Outbreak. Same thing. Yeah, so Mike, same thing. Remember? Remember that monkey? Yeah, got the monkey, got the. <laughs> Oh, God. That's right. oh my god that's right <laughs> all right mike you're uh, up. the memes all right well let's just kill sound bites because we're not neither of us are uh right. doing too good on that one all right here's the last sound bite madness is there any way someone could weaponize the bird flu is that what we're looking at someone doesn't have to weaponize the bird flu 
the birds are doing that. Contagion? That is correct, Mike. <laughs> hey, Good job. Mark, that was an educated guess. <laughs> hey, sometimes that's what it takes in this game. All right, Mike, cool. you're up again. All right, let's do uh, Dead or Alive for three. Dead or Alive for three. All right. Patty Duke, born in 1946, known for The Miracle Worker and Valley of the Dolls. Oh, boy. Um, 50-50 chance. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm going with Dead. Dead in the doornail. Yes, she died in 2016 of sepsis. Mm. Probably as a complication of something, but yeah. Yes. She died of moita. Um, moita. Oh, moita so mean. <laughs> Dead or alive for four. Dead or alive for four, okay. Doris Day, born in 1922, known for movies such as Calamity Jane and Please Don't Eat the Daisies. Mm. Oh boy, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, she's uh, she's mostly alive. I don't know what that means. Well, she's more alive than dead. All right, so you're saying alive? You're correct. She's 95. I had to check this one. She's still alive. Checked it today just to make sure, because because wow. <laughs> who knows, right? All right, yes, Doris Day is still with us. Dor Doris doesn't even know. You know, I was really surprised that she was that she's as old as she is, and we haven't seen anything. I think the last movie she did was like in nineteen. I was looking at the thing; it's like nineteen sixty nine or something. She like retired or something. I, as famous as that name is. All uh, right, Mike, take four off. Take four off. Dead or alive. Doris Day. Oh, sorry. it's done. Yes, category's done. There we go. All right, there we go. Um. Uh, I mean, f good bug, bad bug is 50-50. I mean, that's that's Mark's territory. So let's go with uh, Bet the Geek for three. Bet the Geek for three. All right. What type of building does both versions of Dawn of the Dead take place? Say that one more time. What, what type of building does oh. both versions of Dawn of the Dead take place in? Dawn of the Dead. What type of building? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh crap! I, I I don't even remember, so I'm gonna say a church. A mall. Incorrect. Mark Chrislip is correct. It does take place. I meant mall. mall. I meant mall. I meant mall. Mark, you're up. <laughs> I know my zombies. Bet the geek. Okay. You do. All right. Wow, I'm, I'm All impressed. Right. All right, Mark. What is the name of the company that made the T-Virus in Resident ah. Evil? Oh, God. <laughs> and then oh, I asked the one. <laughs> I know this one. Oh, take it, because I remember. I've seen them all 30 times. They're stupid movies, and I love them. Think ah. of the symbol. Hold on, Mike, before you say it. Think of the symbol. Ah. I can't. Uh, I'm just going to. Uh, I can't. Singing uh. in the rain. <laughs> Umbrella. <laughs> Umbrella. You know what? Fair enough. Thank I you, say Mike. give it to him. Well, I you, owed him you know, one. You I owed, owed him one. one. You owed him I one. Owed him very, one. very good. Fair. There you go. All right. And Mark, the last <laughs> one's yours. Okay, good bug, bad bug. All right, good bug, bad bug. All right. Oh, here we go. Hold on, hold on. What's the score? The score right now is Mark is eight, Mike is 13. Uh, Mark, you could, you could come one no, point. It's just like the blade. I can get close, but I can't pull it out. That either. that is true. All right, so s let's do this for posterity. Posterity. Uh, Sacamorosis. <laughs> oh God. Sacamorosis. Yeah, yeah. Right. So a, I once bug. had a patient who had that in his blood because he was a uh, beer brewer, uh -huh. and I could say I knew it ailed him. Ah, yes. All right. That is a... <laughs> Correct, sir. Yes. yes, that is a species of yeast that has been instrumental in winemaking, baking, and brewing. And that ends our game. Uh, and this time, Mike. I won by Mike, accident. You, you don't huh? win very often, but here you go. Here you go, buddy. He cheated. No, I got to hand it to him. He, he he pulled it out. I didn't think you were going to win this one. I thought there was I, I no way. I didn't either. 
I mean, I thought you were gonna basically like do all medical questions. Well, I had to keep it kind of. I had to keep it fair. Nah, keep it fair. no, you don't. <laughs> this is the Mythwits. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, Mark, I thank you for being a guest. You've been awesome. Um, you are welcome back anytime if you want to come on. I have a, I have one one last question for you before we go. Um, what do you know about like like gut bacteria? Do you do you know a lot about that? Do you know much about that? A fair amount, depending on the context. Because I have I have some burning questions. All this new science is coming out. All this that stuff sounds like gonorrhea. Out. No, but but I'm always worried that when a new science comes out, and all of a sudden everybody jumps on it, like when stem cells came, you know, when stem cells became a thing, and now the CRISPR is becoming a thing, and people are are jumping on the bandwagon and they're trying to say, oh, it does this and it'll be the miracle for that, and blah 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 blah. Uh, it gets really hard to separate the wheat from the chaff, and I'm just like, I have some questions about like things that that because I've been reading about you know the, the gut floor for several years now, ever since Mary. Um, Mary Roach released her book, uh, was, uh, uh, Gulp, Gulp. Yeah. and, and, you know, that was amazing to me. And then I started putting stuff together and doing more reading on my own. And I was like, wow, man, your gut bacteria are way more important than anyone ever gave them credit for. Like the, the stuff that they, that they potentially could be doing for and to us. Um, oh, absolutely. But are you, I would be skeptical where you can do anything about it yourself. Right. Right. I mean, like, like they were talking about fecal transplants and like how, how, you know, successful they are uh, as a medical treatment. They're probably one of the most successful types of medical treatments. Uh, when you look at the success rate of, of treatment with them. Yeah. For uh, treating from, C. difficile, it's the best. Yeah. Thing you can, yeah. yeah. Um, but but it, go ahead. Go, I was going to say, if, if you're, if you're not comfortable talking about that, like on a, on a, on a big level, do you know somebody who is, cause I'd love to really, delve deep into the colon of all of this, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, not really. Mostly I know it in the context of infectious diseases, both uh, prevention and treatment. Right. Uh, and then a little bit for entertainment's sake on obesity. Yeah. Uh, I think that's interesting. Yeah. But from, an, from, an in, from doing something about it, uh, it's way overrated. Uh, okay. What it does do is really fascinating. Okay. Well, maybe we'll have you come back on and talk about, talk about, uh, bug shit. guts. Yeah, talk about <laughs> shit. We we can shoot the shit for an episode if if you like. Um, but yeah, everybody. Uh, I have a great idea, a new yeah. idea for a game. Yeah. I need I need to have you and another guest. I need to have Mark come back as a guest judge, and it's going to be you against somebody else who is going to try and pronounce very difficult bacterial <laughs> words. Didn't we just do that? <laughs> yes, but it's going to be even better. <laughs> I sympathize because if you listen to my podcast, you know I bitch that they never have pronunciation guides for these yeah. things. And it irritates me because like a new bug comes out and I don't know how to pronounce it. Right. And you're supposed so, to speak on it, right? You know, yeah, with your, with your patience. It's not so, easy. All right. So we have one more question and then we're going to go. I, I promise I won't keep any longer. But uh, Paul Nunes asked, he asked another question. He said, are probiotics snake oil? Complicate. Kind of, sort of, yes, kind of, sort of, no. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. It depends on the context that you're using them. If you're using yeah. them for the prevention of uh, diarrhea when you're on antibiotics, it's probably maybe, uh, the literature is increasingly not good, but it's probably effective. For anything else, it wouldn't bother. Now, Activa? Okay. If you're on antibiotics, you might take that. All the other stuff okay. about gut support. If anybody ever says they're supporting something, the only thing they're supporting is the transfer of money from their wallet, right. your wallet to theirs. Exactly. It's just bullshit. So yeah. for the most part, probiotics are overrated. Right. Oh, I never even touched it. Oh, God. I never All right. So go to, you need to go look through Mark's stuff. Ty ty just ty type this into Google. Mark Chris Lip. Uh, uh, immuniz boosting immunization. Okay. That was a fantastic um, show. That was system. Awesome. Yeah. Boosting immune yeah. system. That was so cool. Cause I had, I had no idea that there was just really, it's not a thing. Like, I don't want to die. <laughs> no, man. Uh, I don't want my body to eat itself. <laughs> but yeah, I just, it, I, it, yeah. When you go, that's it. <laughs> but, but go research that. Cause it, it's really interesting. And, All right, Mark. And, and we haven't thoroughly scared you off. Would you mind, uh, would you, would you ever consider coming back on the show uh, on another uh, medical uh, rant? Um, jaunt with us if you guys can tolerate me sure oh yeah fantastic oh yeah no, no you're great 
All right, everybody, make sure you go to edgydoc, E-D-G-Y-D-O-C.com, uh, and check out all of Mark Chris Lips' awesome, awesome good goodness. Uh, it, it's well worth it, I'm telling you. All right, and for th and that is going to close us out. Here we go. All right, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. Yes, we're back for another year, unfortunately for some of you. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet, just like bird flu. Tweet us <laughs> at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is a product of, by, uh, is produced by Aetherforge Creations as part of TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com and Aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't use it to protect yourself from infectious diseases. Vaccinate your kids and go get your goddamn flu shot. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike... I, uh, I, I love you guys. That's that's what you got. That's that's, the, that's what you, okay. that's what I got. All right, better better look next week, Mike. <laughs> all right. Bye all. <laughs>